There's a lot, a lot of products that are in the online coupon space, and Cellfire is one of them. I'm not necessarily a huge fan, but I think there is some savings to be done there. But it, it's basically you text in, and um, you, you, get your, you get your online coupon. Um, Alice, again, is one where you can look things up. All right, this is one of, you know, disclaimer, this is one of our clients, uh, but this is Congressman Culberson, and what he does is he uses Quick, and what Quick is, is video, and you literally just press a button, you launch Quick, and you press a button, and it streams video straight to the web in real time. Well, that changes things. First off, it just crushed me, because I realized that if you could stream video to the web, then I'm sure this was, like the zombie apocalypse, my first thought was that means there really is no Sasquatch, because somebody would have gotten them with their cell phone, with their iPhone. They would be streaming video of them, but if nobody's gotten it, it's just implausible that Sasquatch exists. And once I got over that, I realized that there are political ramifications of this. We're not going to prevent the aggressive editing, but with our mobile device, we can come up with a fuller story, with a counter story, uh, whether it's through training or not. This is, of course, American Idol. I like talking about American Idol because um, who here carved soap as a kid? Who here's ever carved soap? Don't tell me any. Okay, the people in the room who carved soap, why? You know why? It was actually a campaign by a PR guy named Edward Bernays in the 1920s for Procter & Gamble, and he uh, got a request from a lady for a large block of soap, a sculptor named Brenda Putnam, and he was like, why? Why do you want this large block of soap, crazy lady? And she said she was going to use it to practice uh, her sculpting. And he got the idea to have this contest to get kids and soap together. That's not easy to do, right? So he, he, he ran this contest for like 30 years. And they would have these things, and then they would have celebrity judges, and the, the architect for Rockefeller Center would come in and judge them, and then they would show the winners at the local museum. So who else runs that exact same, cam same campaign, product as art with celebrity judges? Is that? What? American Idol does it, and Red Bull does it. It's an identical campaign. And, and I, I guess they haven't run the Red Bull Art of Can up here, um, but they, they ran it in Houston. Again, it's, it's absolutely identical, but they overlaid social media and they overlaid mobile to it. They didn't try to do something that was specifically and only mobile. I, it, just like anyone who advertises in one medium is not going to succeed, same thing. I think mobile must be interwoven in with all of your other things. What can you do with mobile in, with a good strategy and combination? And you're seeing right here in 2009, 178 million votes by texting. And they made a lot of money on that, didn't they? And a lot of times it's the money behind the money, but if they're, each one of those text messages for voting for American Idol costs you, they're not free text messages. So that's, you know, at a minimum, 178 million bucks, right? All right, so let's review. And actually, one slide I didn't show that I wanna, I wanna mention. For those of you interested in iPhone development, there is, if you go to iTunes, there's something in iTunes and search for Stanford iPhone development. And Stanford University has an iPhone development class that's limited to like 60 students. They publish the entire class. Every video, every handout, every assignment is available to download on iTunes for free. So there's absolutely nothing that says that somebody with an app, to, I'm a political science major who turned himself into a programmer, right? There's nothing that says that if you've got the time and determination that people within your company cannot go and learn iPhone development or that you can learn iPhone development on your own. And again, it's Stanford, so the quality of instruction is very, very good, and they even have Apple engineers that come out and do it. And it's free. I mean, it's, it's really quite amazing. All right, so the mobile web. We talked at the beginning, it's about mobile humans. We talked about 50,000 years, new device that we're carrying, uh, new behavior, there's a new culture forming. And it's kind of going backwards from the younger to the older instead of the older to the younger, and, and we're all kind of adapt to that. And we even don't know what we're going to do, but we do know that our mobile device is going to be there with us. And I, I forced you guys into some uncomfortable admissions that we're rolling over in bed and checking our email, and then we won't ever reply to those emails because we don't want anyone else to know that we're rolling over in bed and checking our email, right? So there's all these little subtle things that we do. Uh, another example in Facebook, have you ever seen yourself tagged in a photo and you don't delete it? You come back two weeks later and delete it? All right? A couple of you guys have done that. And the reason is, you, you didn't delete it right away because you don't want to look like you, you know, I can't take it, right? But then you go back and you're like, man, I have a double chin. No! And you remove it, right? <laughs> but the thing is, is, we're not talking to each other about this, but we're all doing it. So if you find yourself doing something on, on a mobile device, I judge somebody else's too. And since none of us are talking about it, that means every one of those, in my opinion, is an opportunity. 
Uh, context and immediacy is everything, like we talked about with the Houston Chronicle, where there was a lot more mobile traffic in the morning and then a lot more web traffic in the day where they were at their work computers checking the news. Definitely start with fresh mobile content. Uh, we talked about different ways of making it. Remember we covered AppMaker, A-P-P-M-A-K-R. Uh, we talked about different um, uh, ad networks that also target specifically mobile. And then keep it simple and keep it fun because it's a very, very uh, small screen and people acknowledge that it's not as good of a device as a full computer, but it's the most relevant device. It's the one that's in my hand uh, at this time. And, and again, an example of red laser, that's something that's gonna save you very real money. If I see a bright shiny object at Best Buy, I'm gonna buy it right now. If I hit it and I find out that I can get the exact same thing if I wait two days from Amazon and save $300, I might wait three days, right? All right, what questions do you guys have? So, yes, ma'am. I'm going to grab your question and then your question. I did see in the back. Um, the Tools of Change is by O'Reilly. Uh, O'Plastery Riley, he's the book publisher, does all the, uh, in the computer industry, we talk to him as, as the animal books because all the different programming has a different animal on the cover of them. Um, and it, it's, it's specifically about everything from the Kindle to, you know, the new business models because, for example, Google is releasing in their Google book product all of the PDFs of the books that are no longer under copyright. So, I mean, that's the type of thing. Why can't I have all of Shakespeare's work on my mobile device? So, yeah, look up, look up O'Reilly Tools of Change. And uh, I don't know what the hashtag's going to be, but it's probably going to be either TOC or OTOC. Uh, in the back, ma'am? If I really want to prove to you what a great job I did, I'm going to demand a tracking 1-800 number. And then, again, with a mobile device, somebody's going to call in because of that campaign, and then they're going to save it in their, their contact list, and then they will forever call that tracking number. So you either have to keep paying that agency to continue with the tracking number, or, or then they're going to over-report it. So some of it, as far as like Facebook ads, both to the mobile and to the offline, are phenomenally uh, accountable. Like what I'm, what I'm doing with my Facebook ads right now is, is I'm actually targeting uh, click-throughs, but I'm actually seeking impressions. And the reason I'm doing that is because it lowers my price. For your offline, well not for your offline, but for your off mobile stuff, Google Analytics for us is pretty much it. We used to use Urchin, we used to use Deep Metrics, and then Google actually bought Urchin, and, and Web Trends is the other big competitor from an analytics perspective. Uh, but uh, Google Analytics is really pretty amazing. Um, it wouldn't be amazing if I was one of the companies they were putting out of business by buying my competitor and giving it away for free. Um, but you can, you can do tracking on it pretty effectively. <coughs> my actual pet peeve on advertising and public relations both, if you want to actually measure it, then I need a client who's going to give me $20,000 to do a pre-survey and a post-survey on my target audience to see if we made an impact. I mean, that's the only real way to measure the ROI of pretty much any campaign, in my humble opinion. Uh, and uh, since I don't have those clients, we live through with analytics. What's your take on uh, privacy? You talked about these applications following around site to site. Uh, my take on privacy, I, I don't like the ones that follow me from site to site, but I will say they're spot on. I, I clicked on one for Denny Manufacturing. They sell back cloths for photography. That's one of our hobbies. Um, they're one of the largest photographers. I'd never heard of them. I saw a friend of mine fan them on Facebook, and then I've seen their ads now both on my mobile device, uh, on Facebook, and also when I'm browsing the web. So I know they're tracking me across all those ways. And then as, a, as an individual, there are two ways we opt out of this. One, we just don't participate. Oh, you know, we lock everything down. Like a lot of women on Twitter will protect their updates, which means nobody will ever accidentally find them. So a lot of the serendipitous things that occur to those of us in the public sector. Now what I do is I basically manage my public persona. I don't post things that I wouldn't want others to see. And I, I do uh, subconsciously or consciously manipulate my, my personal brand's representation in social media and through mobile. And mobile's real dangerous for your personal brand. You know, right around 11 o'clock at night, what you think is funny at the pub, whoo, not funny when your PR director sees it Monday morning. And she may work for you, but she's got a temper, right? So there's this, um, <laughs> All right, with that, I think it's 12.58, so I'm going to go ahead and bring it to a close, but thank you again.